Ratcatcher leads the Beastmen toward the kingdom. The Suicide Squad's time is running out. Episode 4 of Suicide Squad Ice Guy is out and brings new plot details. Stay here in the video so we can analyze this episode together and theorize about what's to come. Welcome to Comic Chronicles. Episode 4 is here, bringing a bit more depth to the story of the kingdom where our protagonists are trapped. Even though they won the last battle against Ratcatcher and his army of beastmen, the Suicide Squad ended up destroying the castle they were supposed to recover for the royalty. Harley dreams of being with her beloved Joker in a hideout, discussing the best way to get rid of rats, but just when she's about to get the answer, she wakes up. The Suicide Squad feels that their efforts to fulfill the agreement of defeating the kingdom's enemies in exchange for their freedom were in vain, as once again, they find themselves locked in a prison cell after overdoing it in the battle and destroying the castle occupied by the Beastmen. Now the villains have only 12 hours to reach the helicopter, or their bombs will explode. While they argue, the princess appears to apologize, but Harley calls her a coward who doesn't know how to express her own opinions or make decisions. Then, the commander appears, warning the princess that she shouldn't be in the prison without an escort. He also orders the squad out of the cell because the queen wants to speak with them. In her room, the princess gets lost in her thoughts, with a flashback to when she was a child. She would dress as a commoner and meet her friends to play and spend the day with them. Each of her friends was from a different kingdom, including one of the beast men. Since she was young, she saw the people's hardships and how much they suffered because of war and hunger. Unfortunately, her friends, still children, couldn't resist, and she was left alone. That's why she cares so much about the people in present times. This detail brings more depth to Princess Fion's past, creating a connection between this kingdom and the people living below it, which was interesting to see in this episode. Then, Colonel Cecil enters the princess's room, pulling her out of her thoughts and reminding her of the War Council meeting. At the meeting, everyone is in a panic because the Imperial Army with the Beastmen is marching through the forest toward the palace, and if the kingdom doesn't take action, they will invade. Before we continue, if you're enjoying watching Suicide Squad Ice Kai and want to stay on top of all the details and references of this anime, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and enable notifications. Also, if you want to learn about the Suicide Squad stories in their original form, the comics, check out our affiliate links for the comics in the video description so you can get them at no extra cost. That way, you help keep our channel up and running. Thank you very much. Deadshot tells the Queen that the Beastmen didn't betray the kingdom on their own, they are being controlled by Ratcatcher. Harley thinks about her earlier dream, which was also a flashback, remembering that Joker taught her the best way to get rid of rats is to make them eat each other. This Joker flashback was cool, and his behavior was similar to what we've seen from the Clown Prince of Crime and other adaptations. Rick Flag asks the Queen to keep her promise if they help in the battle, so she will set them free. The squad and the kingdom's soldiers alone will not have enough numbers to deal with the Beastmen army. So, they ask for help from the orcs and others in the prison where they started the rebellion in episode 2, and they will have the same agreement as the squad if they help in the battle, they will gain their freedom. At the battle camp, the soldiers tremble with fear, while the suicide squad members are surprisingly calm. Nano almost finishes the army's food, Harley rests, Clayface raises mud barriers for protection, Peacemaker sits waiting, and Rick Flagg studies the battlefield map while Deadshot positions himself in the hills. When the Imperial Army arrives, Ratcatcher notices that everything is different. The prisoners are positioned alongside the army, and Clayface's barriers conceal most of the army, blocking Ratcatcher's line of sight. Feeling threatened, he creates a magical field around the Beastmen to command them, but as soon as this happens, we hear a shot fired by Deadshot, shattering the crystal in Ratcatcher's staff preventing him from controlling the Beastmen. Regaining consciousness, the Beastmen realize what happened and kill Ratcatcher as he begs for his life. Then, the Beastmen surrender to the Kingdom's soldiers. The commander and soldiers are confused about what happened, but the squad explains that during the last battle, they noticed Ratcatcher needed to use the staff to control the enemies, so all they had to do was destroy the staff. Thus, they ended the battle without any Kingdom soldiers being harmed. The War Council and the Princess celebrate the good news, while we see the Queen in shock, ending the episode. Did you also feel suspicious after seeing the Queen's reaction? This episode was a bit better than the previous ones. Although Episode 3 had more action scenes with the Suicide Squad, 
Here we had more story depth with the flashback involving Princess Fion's past and her relationship with the people of the kingdom. We learn that this battle against the Imperial forces has been going on for years and that in the past six months, the royal army has dwindled with the beastmen changing sides. However, we still don't know the real motive for this battle. The most likely scenario is that the Imperial force wants to take over the royal territory, and regarding the royalty, the queen seems very suspicious, in my opinion. The theory is that perhaps the queen is an imposter, and this imposter could be someone from Rick Flagg's group who arrived in this ice guy before the suicide squad, sent by the emperor. It's an absurd theory, but the last scene of this episode not only shows the queen with a suspicious expression but also the princess Fion worried about her mother. On the other hand, it could be that the queen is just dissatisfied because the battle ended without the beastman being injured in the conflict, but I prefer the former theory. It would be more interesting and raises even more curiosity about who this emperor is. Although this episode had a more interesting plot than the previous episodes, it still lacks a greater focus on the core of the Suicide Squad, they are still the villains who want to prevent their heads from being blown off. The fear is that they will finish the anime without each of them having had their journey throughout the story, but this episode brought something that might indicate an exploration of Harley Quinn's origin, which is the moment when Princess Fion visits the squad in prison, and Harley calls her a coward. What Harley said to Fion about her not being brave enough to express her own opinion and that it reminded her of someone is a hint that we might see some development for Harley Quinn. Maybe she was referring to herself before becoming Harley Quinn and joining Joker. This also raises questions about the character's past. Did she have an origin similar to the Mad Love comic, which showed the character's origin? Remember, the first Suicide Squad movie brought a past for Harley similar to the comic. With that, I believe we will see more about Harley's past, but I hope we can see the same for the other squad members, with each having at least a brief development throughout the episodes. But now I want to know your opinion. Do you also think this episode was a bit better than the previous ones? Are you enjoying watching Suicide Squad Ice Sky? Write your thoughts in the comments below, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, and enable notifications so that whenever a new video about Suicide Squad Ice Sky or other DC and Marvel news is out, you'll be the first to know. Also, check out our description for affiliate links to Suicide Squad comics and other DC titles you might be interested in purchasing. This way, you support our channel at no extra cost. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.